reports. So, um, hi everybody, welcome to the Jenkins Infra meeting. Um, we have a few things that we have to discuss now. So let's start with uh, the infrastructure and the infrastructure uh, sponsoring. So a few things happened there. Uh, first, from an Azure point of view, um, we try to reduce the bill from, um, we, we try to be under 10K per month. Um, right now we should be working fine, so we were able to, to be below um, 8K for this month. So I hope we'll be able to to, to stabilize uh, the cost. But basically what we did is we deleted few uh, non-critical services. We reduced the number of machines that we can provision on CI the Jenkins .io, um, at the same time. So it should not really you know, impact CI the Jenkins .io, but it will just allow us to better control how many machines we deploy. And so we just um, spread the loads. Um, from an Azure point of view, there are at least one service that, um, that I would like to validate is the Evergreen database. Do we need to keep it? I mean, do we need to keep a backup, basically, or can we just delete it? Um, maybe Oleg has some, uh, some opinions on this. Yeah, so what was our consensus? Uh, we can uh, delete all services and resources which we can recreate if needed. Yep. Thanks for confirming. Yeah, if it's a history of updates, basically essentials plugin sets, I think we can just delete it. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure I'm, uh, because I was working today in the Terraform codes and uh, now everything is ready to, to remove. So that's regarding Evergreen. Otherwise, regarding the Amazon sponsoring. So um, I had a few meetings with Amazon last week and we are on good progress. So. Um, the contact that we have at Amazon sent um, the requests, so I should receive a response within 10 days, but normally we should be, everything should be uh, approved. And normally we should uh, be sponsored up to 10K per month and for one year, so um, the contract will end in one year. Um, so that's part, that's regarding the budget. From uh, a manage management point of view, um, the account, uh, the Amazon account that we are using is one account provided by CloudBees, uh, which was a temporary account provided by CloudBees and it became uh, a non-permanent, a non-temporary non account. So we have to migrate uh, from CloudBees to the CDF in order to allow more people to access it. So we discussed with Amazon and we we realized that it would be faster to just approve the budget and then work on the migration of, of that account from CloudBees to CDF. So until then, uh, it's mainly CloudBees folks who can access it as a first time. But um, yeah, regarding considering that we will have some money that we will be able to use on Amazon, um, the plan would be at least uh, the plan will be to me to move. Um, um, as much as possible, um, see the Jenkins that are your workload from Azure to Amazon. Um, so yeah, I have to send an email about that in the coming days. I'm just I just waiting to to have a confirmation that the budget is approved and that I have that budget on the account before I start in working on 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 the Amazon parts. Um, do you have any question until now? Nope. So let's continue. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, the Asia dashboard, and what okay. surprises me that uh, the forecast uh, now it's about 7k, almost 8k. So I'm not sure what exactly happened to now infrastructure, but we are two times uh, down being compared to the previous year. Uh, previous so months. So basically, we, we deleted few few services. So the, the duplicated Kubernetes cluster, Hotbin, mm -hmm. um, cost us 2K per month. We had a testing, um, another testing Kubernetes cluster, which also cost us 2K. So I deleted that cluster beginning of the week or end of last week, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things. So basically, I just review all the services and try to delete all the things that we don't use. Yep. So, yeah, what uh, I just meant that uh, if our target for CDF is 10K, right now uh, we are going to hit this target uh, while doing nothing. Uh, so. Yes, so yes and no. The thing is, right now we have, we have to be below 10K, but you have the Amazon account that cost us 5K, we have the Azure account that cost us um, 8K right now, and we also still have a machine in Rackspace. So we still have some work to do uh, in order to reduce yep. the cost of the infrastructure. 
but yeah, we are making progress. Um, basically, um, we had we have an agreement with the CDF. So the CDF approved to reimburse uh, the budget up to 20k per month until April. So this is um, so we have yeah the, the the goal is to to reuse the cost by the end of April uh, 2019 uh, uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, so while we are still you know, discussing about the sponsoring, um, I'm still in contact with Fastly. So um, ideally, would like to be able to see if we can use Fastly to distribute packages. Um, we we discovered last week that apparently Tyler forgot that he signed a contract with Fastly sorry years ago, and so now we have to revoke that contract and create a new one. Um, so yeah, I'm in the procedure with folks at Fastly to, to find a good solution there. Normally, the contract for there is. Um, one year and then it's renew every month um, until um, so yeah that's regarding the infrastructure um, regarding the work up that was happening on ci.jenkins.io the um, there are a few things that were uh, team team helped a lot so he started working on creating um, virtual machine for Azure so basically um, using Packer to, to create small um, virtual machines so we don't have to reinstall all the packages when we create a new, um, when you provision a new machine. So almost everything is there. We have now to configure CI the Jenkins that I to use that and to generate those images. Um, considering that we will have some budget from Amazon, um, I'm not planning to spend a lot of time on CI the Jenkins that I to improve it. Um, as uh, I want to be sure that first we have the budget, um, how, much, how, many, how much money we have, sorry. Sorry, uh, that's, uh, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so I'm not planning to spend a lot of time on ci.jenkins.io. The only, the only work that is useful, and Tim also started working on that, which is um, writing a configure, config as code uh, YAML file to ci.jenkins.io configuration. The only thing is, it did not configure um, Azure resources um, because right now we are not sure if we'll keep using Azure um, and for how long we'll use Azure. So that's the thing that you have to, to figure out. Um, otherwise, um, and then no, any question regarding CI the Jenkins at IO? Nope. So, on. I have one, two, two, two last uh, topic, which is package the Jenkins at IOS. This is the way we distribute packages. As you may notice, we had uh, several issues in the in the past days. Um, Why normally, as far as I can tell, um, there are some Apache workers that are leaking, so they are just there and do nothing. And then when someone tried to establish a connection with package the Jenkins at IO, uh, that person need to wait quite a lot of time before. Um, um, receiving the packages um, and so we had to restart the Apache um, in order to everything to be back to normal um, why this happen every few months now it start to be happening every few days so um, if we don't have if we have if we have uh, the fastly account and then we can just uh, distribute the packages from fastly it would be perfect otherwise uh, we will have to, we may have to reprioritize the work um, that I did with my orbit to to change the, the tools that we use to distribute packages. Um, so yeah, that's something that you have to keep in mind. And otherwise, the last topic that I want to mention, um, we had a discussion regarding, um, do we use Jira or GitHub issues for the Jenkins project and for the Jenkins hosting? So basically it started with Timja asking if we can use it for the hosting project and it evolved to the, um, what should we do with Jira? So um, there is nice threads about that on the mailing list. So I really invite you to have a look at to it and to contribute. Um, while I do not expect to have a clear um, a final decision now, um, I'm just really happy that we, we started the discussion. So we have a few months before we have to find a, a, an issues. But meanwhile, um, I ask Atlassian to renew the Jira license. So this is something that I have to do in the coming days as well. I'm just waiting for KK to approve. Um, the access that's uh, pretty old for me. Um, does anyone have to want to, to talk about something specific? I see that Alex is around, so. Yeah, so I just wanted to, oh, Mark, go ahead. No, go ahead, Alex, you have the floor. Uh, I was just gonna say, so I've been testing a Windows-based ACI agent. Um, 
Uh, so it requires less resources, requires less um, money on Azure. Um, so it's a, it's a Windows Nano Server image with, uh, I've tested the JDK 8 version. I haven't tested the JDK 11 version, but um, it's up and running. It spins up fairly quickly, not as fast as the Linux um, Docker or the Linux ACI agents, but it's something that we could um, hopefully have people start testing to reduce the number of VMs that we need uh, for the ci.jenkins.io. So, Alex, can you describe how the what the transformation would be there? The the ACI transformation in a in the build plugin Jenkins file seemed pretty straightforward. Are you envisioning this would be similar a similar kind of thing? Yeah, so right now you can actually enable this um, feature already. If you um, change your Jenkins file to pass in force ACI true as a parameter, um, it will pick up and try and use the, or it will tr use the, uh, both the uh, Linux ACI agent and the Windows ACI agent for the builds. So people can start testing this now. I just did it in a branch for one of my plugins just to kind of test it and see how it was going. Um, so obviously that was only one plugin and it was kind of a more simple plugin. So it'd be very helpful to get people to test it uh, with some more intense, maybe the Git series of plugins, uh, make sure that the, the um, agent has all the necessary components for, uh, or the Docker image has all the necessary components for building plugins. Is it, is, it some, is it something that we can enforce? So we can, for example, switch every job to using that. Windows. Yes. Yeah, we can change the um, the build plugin dot groovy um, to. So right now we're bypassing usage of ACI for plugin builds on Windows. Um, we could go and change that so that um, the ACI was the default at, on both Linux and Windows in the future. So it is something that we could enforce and kind of, you know it wouldn't require everybody to go change their uh, Jenkins file. For because, it, because, because to me, because to me, if it's working for you, let's, I mean, let's say, let's, let's wait one week and then just enforce it and, and see if people start complaining about that. There is uh, one issue with it. Um, tests, we should learn better. So we have uh, two frameworks we use across Jenkins plugin ecosystem. One is uh, Docker fixtures, which is part of Jenkins test harness. Have um, test containers in some plugins, and uh, we will need uh, to provide opt out way for those uh, who use these components, or maybe we need to redesign build plugin a bit to run uh, only Docker specific integration tests on uh, such agents. So, we've been discussing uh, some of these topics with Mark before, but I think that uh, we could uh, redesign the flow a bit. Uh, to use ACI by default, but if you just uh, uh, make it uh, drop in, uh, you will likely break a lot of plugins. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what 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 what? So basically, what would be the next steps now in the, regarding this? So what would be the best way to? Um, so I, I would definitely like some additional testing by some other plugin owners. Um, basically, I just created a branch. Okay. Uh, in, in my plugin and um, change the, my Jenkins file to have force ACI to true. Um, and I can, I can send out the plugin I did that on. It's not hard to figure out how to do, but I can send out that information. Okay. Um, and, then, and then I just ran some builds, um, you know, made some changes in that branch and made sure things were running and, and it launched the agent correctly and things like that. Okay. So how's it how's it different to the Linux Force ACI with Docker? Is there a way to opt out? Uh, right now you opt into ACI, and we will need uh, to implement opt out. Right. So I'm ready to spend some time next week uh, to implement that because yeah, I already started drafting a few pull requests for build plugin redesign. Uh, so. I'm ready to spend some time next week to create a prototype and uh, to test um, Windows ACI in parallel. Okay. Is there any other topic that people want to bring and to discuss during this meeting? This meeting. Jim and Jordan had topics related to yeah. additional agents. So Jim, you want to go ahead? 
Yeah, so uh, I think a couple of you guys looked at my PR so far. Uh, but in my PR, uh, I made against the uh, Jenkins Docker repository. Uh, it was kind of a rebuild um, of the build pipeline. Uh, so instead of having one script that kind of drives the building of these images, uh, we switched to a kind of parallel, uh, parallel builds, uh, which is going to save time. And also, um, one, of the, one of the things I put in the mailing list uh, I talked about is uh, when security patches happen, you can just build that specific variant. So if Debian has a security issue, then uh, through his pipeline, I could just patch Debian. Um, and there's a couple other improvements I made, um, but uh, one of the big changes in terms of infrastructure is uh, getting off the use of QMU, uh, the emulator, uh, and building on-prem, uh, or building on architecture or platform, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I mentioned this to Mark a couple of times. Uh, IBM is uh, willing to uh, offer up some uh, S390, so Z resources, and also uh, power resources uh, to you guys. Um, I mean, I mean, there's a couple of different options to acquire those and pull it into you guys' um, kind of infrastructure. Uh, one of the easiest probably for you, um, depending on how everything's set up, is we can just give you naked VMs where you guys could install agents or uh, pull it in however you want. Um, so that, that's basically one of the things needed for this PR to kind of go forwards. Uh, and obviously you guys have x86 resources. I think Mark mentioned, I think, uh, AWS has arm support for, for platform. I think now the, the build. Yeah, that's us. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. So the problem that, uh, arm is just one arm. And uh, if you need something specific, uh, then uh, it may not be enough because AWS offers only ARM64. Uh, um, and if you need a 32 bit platforms or whatever, then it uh, will be a problem. But who cares about 32 bits nowadays? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess ARM64 is the more like the newer Raspberry Pis, right? The, the Pi 4 and I think 3 too. Um, yeah, yeah that, I know. I know that is a major change for you guys. So I, I don't really know much about the infrastructure. I've been diving kind of deep into the whole, you know, Jenkins repository, working with Alex and Mark, uh, and even you, Oleg. Uh, but I don't really know anything about your infrastructure and how it's set up. So this is a big change, and uh, I love people to at least give me some feedback or um, to work with me on getting it going. And one thing to add, really important, is um, I didn't touch any of the main. Uh, build pipeline uh, scripts. So, you know, pushing for the official Jenkins repository you have. Um, I didn't really touch any of the unofficial ones either. All these additions I made um, are basically just that additions. So it wouldn't affect anything you guys have currently. Um, I think I think the path might change slightly for some of the experimental builds, um, but that's it. So so first from, uh, from the, um, so, First, regarding the infrastructure that you are willing to to, to prefer to offer, um, mm -hmm. I can definitely add that. As you saw, there is um, a release environment that uh, that I've been working on for the past few years, and it's almost ready. So I would be really happy to test that on, on that 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 testing environment. So before, mm -hmm. so I mean, we have a way to, to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah. So if we can work on a way to to just put the credentials there. Um, we can move forward. That would be really nice. And regarding yeah, I, the process, um, I think the the thing is, um, I would I would prefer to work with you in order to to bring that in the new release environment. But otherwise, uh, we can we can we can also configure the, the current. So we have so basically what we have right now is we have, we use cdjenkins.io to test um, as much as we can, and then we have a second mm -hmm. machine called Trusted CI, which is hidden inside um, Amazon Networks. And so there, that machine is reconfigured with all the secrets. So if we, and that's the, that's the place where we also generate the Docker images. So either I work with you to, to configure that machine to, to use your resources. Yeah, but yeah. this is something that you have to, that you have to, maybe we can discuss together after the meeting. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because uh, I, I can, uh, it might take a week or two to get the resources, uh, okay. but it should be fairly easy to get power and, and uh, S390 for you guys. Um, okay. They have, we have a couple like public um, offerings in terms of like 
uh, I think Oregon State University hosts like their Jenkins build pipeline. Uh, but since, I mean, you guys, pipeline's kind of complex in terms of what you guys are doing. Uh, probably just a native VM would probably be better to pull in everything for you guys. Okay. Uh, at least yeah. my understanding, right? Is that is that what you guys want? Um, yeah, to me, to me, that that approach seems way better. So we can we can already okay. I mean, yeah. learn more Sweet. about that and practice. Awesome. Yeah, I can I can work on that with you and getting that um, kind of going. At least giving you the the resources, and then we can take it from there. Yep. Um, Perfect. Any other topic? I have a question about mailing list. Mm, so um, I'm trying to finalize the Jenkins Array Meetup Linux story. Uh, plus today we had um, a discussion about the documentation seek mailing list. Plus before we had uh, discussions about uh, whatever board related mailing list. Uh, so I had a question, uh, what would be the best way to proceed with all these stories? Uh, because they are quite isolated from the rest of the infrastructure, uh, but we do not really have insights uh, about who owns mailing lists, uh, who can manage them. Who can so let me check. List. So let me check one thing. Um, I have few password for the mail man mailing list. I'm just checking which one I have. No, no, but but. Olivier, I thought Oleg's question was not about the mailman lists. It was about uh, the Google Groups, right? Oh, so oh, okay. yeah, I still have uh, mailman uh, lists in my uh, kill list. Uh, just to uh, clarify context for others, we still uh, run our own mail server. And since we moved to infrastructure mailing list and uh, all other mailing lists are duplicated, we could uh, get rid of the service quickly. Mm -hmm. So, so just one one thing. So, we do not manage the mailman service. That service is provided by by us USL. So, we have few mailing lists there uh, with one one admin password. And so, we started moving away from mailman in order to use Google Groups. So, for yeah. all mailman, basically the only thing that I need to do is just switch them in read only. The only one that I did not switch in read only immediately, which is is the Jenkins infra mailing list, because I just want to be sure that people can finish the the, 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 the thread that we started there. But otherwise, I will have to to, to switch it in read only. Regarding the the Google Group mailing list, it's a little bit more complicated because everybody can create a Google Groups. There is no central. Um, um, identity right now. So, for example, I created the Jenkins Infra mailing list, but I'm I'm the, I'm I'm an owner, I think, on the dev mailing list as well. But the thing is, it's always who created the, the mailing list first, and then we have to find the right person to do the work there. So, regarding, for example, the Doug mailing list, the Doug um, mailing list, I have no access to on that one. And the same for Jenkins every meetups, right? Um, more than probably yes. Let me let me verify this, but. So for a special interest group mailing lists, we have um, a policy as a part of JEP4 that uh, infra officer uh, must be added uh, to the admin list. Okay. So that uh, we can at least uh, prevent it for new mailing lists. But for old ones, it's still a problem. My, my, my guess would be, my, way, my guess would be just to look at where, who sent the first email on the mailing list, who replied the first email on that mailing list, and then contact those person. Mm, yeah. That's a good theory. Unfortunately, my permissions don't allow to really check who is owner in some mailing list. Uh, <coughs> uh, one other question I had, um, as I know the, the platform SIG has a glitter chat, uh, and I, I know you guys recently, we were just talking about the mailing list, moved over to Google Groups. Do you guys have a Glitter chat for the infrastructure team or are you guys no. just using IRC? We are using IRC, yeah. Okay, sweet. And so, yeah, and we have no plan to move to Gitter um, or, or something else. So while why, why IRC is not perfect, um, yeah, it's, at the moment, that's what we are using. So, okay. Uh, regarding the mailing list, um, yeah, if if Oleg, you can try to find um, that and who sent the first email. Otherwise, mm -hmm. just, I can I can also have a look. But uh, from my to me, I think I only have access. So that's what I'm looking. I only have access to the dev mailing list and infra mailing list. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I figured out uh, owner for a few million fees. So, yeah, I was able to pull it for documentation uh, through REST API. And okay. apparently, it's Tyler who owns the mailing list. I'll apply uh, the same approach to mailing lists I know about. Okay. I guess uh, we will still have an issue with company CLI and uh, uh, donations mailing list, but it's something for me and Alex and other board members uh, to figure out because we still have uh, issues with permissions there. Okay. The, the, way, the way we manage the, the, the Google Groups, it's, I mean, quite confusing because, as I said, because everybody can create um, a Google Groups mailing is It's not really <coughs> like who has access to what and be sure that, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, maybe it's uh, something we need to figure out. So if we just agree on a policy that we want to have infra officer uh, as an owner of all mailing lists, at least as a co-owner, it might help. I think having an infra officer, it's a good idea, but we also have to be sure that um, um, the person, I mean, the closest officer to a specific mailing list also have access. So for example, yeah. uh, on That's the right. doc mailing list, uh, because I, um, I, don't want, I don't want to have privileged access on everything, um, especially if I'm not using those, but yeah, um, it makes sense to me to have access to those mailing lists. So, Okay, I'll try to deliver on that. Um, if we don't have any other topic, I propose to stop the meeting here and continue uh, offline on RSC or whatever. Uh, Jim, I will contact you for the, um, for the resources right after the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody yeah, for your time. Thanks. And Thank you. Have a good yeah, day. Thank you.